right, I have a, I have a gong, so if you guys are talking for too long, I'm definitely gonna, gonna use this. Um, hey everyone, my name is Tiff. Quick correction, I don't actually work at Magic Eden anymore. I work at ME Foundation. I'm working on the token launch ME, which will be adopted by Magic Eden as their official token, reflecting the power of cross-chain dApps. You guys wanna, fellas, wanna introduce yourselves really quick? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Luca Nets. I'm uh, the CEO of Igloo, which uh, holds pudgy penguins and uh, abstract. Uh, Frank D. Gods, um, I cheated Solana at the bottom and, uh, and uh, run D. Gods, yeah. Sick. <laughs> All right, um, so I think the way this is gonna run is I'm gonna give my opening remarks and then we'll just get into it. Um, I'm taking the position, so obviously, I don't think NFTs are dead, but in a strange twist of events, I have to FUD my own bags. So I'm gonna talk about why I think NFTs are dead and then we'll just kind of riff. So, um, the reason why NFTs are perceived as dead is mostly because of the trading volume. If you compare uh, NFT trading volume in the height of, I think it was January 20, in 22 when Ethereum NFTs had like $4 billion in trade volume. If you look at the last 30 days, they had like $400 million in trading volume across all of the marketplaces. So um, that's kind of like one of the reasons why people think NFTs are dead. One of, some of the causes for why this might have happened would be, number one, um, the fact that creator royalties became optional. Uh, this was something that the ecosystem thought was baked in for sure, like ro royalties would always exist, but basically everybody found out that they can actually be bypassable and that's what marketplaces ended up doing. The second thing is that, uh, and maybe these are like tied, right? Um, th these reasons are tied together, but there haven't been a lot of new use cases coming out of NFTs. The most dominant form of NFTs still remains PFPs, and when we thought that NFTs were gonna be the future of music, ticketing, not a lot of that stuff has happened. Um, we've maybe seen some bright shoots on like deep-in projects using NFTs or gaming projects using NFTs, but those are not, haven't been dominant um, to really bring NFTs back. Um, and then the third thing, which is probably the outcome of these two things, is like no new retail participants. So we had a lot of new people who joined crypto in 21, um, and they were trading NFTs, but a lot of those folks either left or they pivoted into something else. And so if we think of NFTs as like an asset class that's um, like tokens, like something to speculate on and trade, then uh, objectively NFTs are, are not as alive as they were in 2021. So um, I will just kind of start asking spicy questions. So. Frank, you recently dropped a token called DGOD, so isn't that your way um, of kind of leaving NFTs? And you know, what is, in, in your own words, um, what is the optimistic outlook for NFTs at this point? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think we left NFTs. I, I think NFTs have been going in this direction. So to do a, a recap of history, I think a lot of this NFT craze started with Beeple's one of one selling. And so that was like a one of one and the whole meta was one of one art. And then they became slightly more fungible. You had like Bored Apes, you had 10K PFP collections, which is like where Luke and I came in. And those were more fungible, you had trading with them. Then you have marketplaces start to form. And then you have collection offers, which look a lot like an order book. You know, you have bids and asks. And so over time, NFTs, and then obviously royalties go away, like sell taxes go away. So I actually think there's an argument that NFTs have been going in a direction because of the market of being more and more fungible. So I think what we're doing, or we're you know, we always get shit, we're always trying stuff, but uh, what, we're trying to what we're trying to say here is, you know, the same community that's formed over the last three years, we're, we're just you, turning that, giving that community more optionality and putting it in, in a different vehicle, but we're not trying to, uh, you know, abandon NFTs. It's more just giving the community more optionality and, uh, you know, like, let's fucking see what happens. Like, is it, so is it? I think the communities that, that form because of NFTs are real, and you can only form some of these communities with uh, a finite number of assets, and that's what lets them get strong. But then over time, um, I think they, they can evolve, and that's like the D God take uh, right now, is like we're trying to evolve, um, is, yeah. Isn't this just a nice way of saying you're trying to diversify outside of NFTs? It's just like saying that the NFT crowd is not intertwined with crypto, but it, but it is, you know, like, uh, it's, I think the mythical kind of pure retail people that only buy NFTs at this point, if you're still in crypto, you've dabbled with a lot of different things. I always say like the same, it used to be, hey, what's minting today? Now it's, what's the contract address? But it's the same crowd of people that were doing the DJ and mints that are now getting into meme coins. So I think the, the people have ultimately stayed relatively the same, but the vehicle that they're using to trade is just like different. And it kind of, it makes sense. Like 
it's expensive to buy a full packet, like a, a full NFT, um, compared to be buying like a part of a network, like, which I think that, that they're both doing the same thing, so. Okay, one more question for you and then I'll go to Luca. So what I'm hearing is that a lot of the behaviors that people ape into are for meme coins or instead of NFTs today. So haven't meme coins largely just replaced the need for NFTs? Like why would anybody create a new NFT collection if meme coins are also cultural and they're also fun and... And you can put the moggles on and like, uh, yeah, like they, they've infiltrated the PFP as well. Um, well, I think you're asking the big question. Like we're not seeing new mints and typically in like any economy, uh, when people aren't making new stuff, it gets more difficult. I actually think, um, like we could see the, the rise of like small collections again. So you know, maybe like big fungible, if you follow my analogy, like big fungible collections like a 10K PFP, maybe there's not really any demand or desire for people to make more of those. But like even on Solana, there's a small uh, collection called Boogles. A lot of you guys probably know, uh, it's very point, let's fucking go. You know, like they've created something that really impacts the entire chain, like a small community. And uh, I think that could become more of a use case again for NFTs. Like we might go full circle back to one of ones to uh, smaller collections. To that already? makes sense to me. That something something people would want to buy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And and honestly, I would love to chime into ultimately what Frank is doing. I don't think what Frank is doing is uh, leaving NFTs. I think there's an elephant in the room. If I'm going to steal man, you know why I think NFTs are seeing a, a, a bad time at the current moment. As I think the the successful NFTs are too illiquid for whales and priced out of retail. And so somebody came to me in regards to pudgy penguins and they were like, dude, you know, everyone's rallying behind you guys, everyone's supporting what you guys are doing, but a $30,000 penguin is too expensive for most retail buyers. And on the other side of it, you know, a whale who really wants to support you, you know, can't really put $10 million on your floor because ultimately it's hard to get in and out of that. And so I actually think Frank's experiment is one that I'm personally rooting for uh, and one that I'm super excited about because I don't think uh, they're mutually exclusive. I don't think you, you, you know, to, to do a meme coin is to then neglect the NFT. The NFT is actually super interesting in the sense that it creates a form of tribalism and community because of the identity in which you wear it on social that I think is unparalleled. And you also brought something up in regards to meme coins. I'm a huge supporter of meme coins, but I do think there's an elephant in the room uh, in terms of the distribution of meme coins. Uh, unpopular to most, actually most meme coins, uh, based on my knowledge and the people that I've spoken to, are low float, uh, high FDV, though it might look like on the chart that it's, you know, fully, fairly distributed. It's actually not, if, if you know a lot of the people behind these things. And so from my perspective, you know, I still think NFTs today are the best way to distribute amongst a, a fair amount, uh, or a, a fair distribution amongst uh, the right amount of people in a way that I still think is unparalleled. So uh, I think there's something about identity that's not, that's not to be underestimated. This idea of being able to wear something, knowing that when you're either wearing a pudgy penguin or a D-God, you're able to identify what that person is into and maybe their interests. And that access and that connectivity. Uh, I tell this to you know, entrepreneurs all the time, but uh, you know, 95% of my income was based on who I know, not what I know. And NFTs build relationships in a way that's unparalleled. So you know, an NFT being worth you know, maybe $10,000 or $50,000 or you know, half a million dollars ultimately can make sense depending on the access that you get. Uh, and still nothing has come close to that. Let me ask a little bit more about what you're doing. So you guys are building a chain called Abstract. Can you explain to me why does Pudgy Penguins need to have a chain? And isn't that just another way of kind of finding diversification outside of NFTs as well? I, I think our, our mission uh, pretty much since day one is to push consumer adoption. And so the, the chain part of our business is really like we're looking around. We, we, we want to stay, uh, you know, I'm in the EVM boat. So uh, huge respect to all the Solana folks. Uh, I have a lot of respect for this team and, and the community. Uh, but, uh, you know, I wanted to stay Ethereum aligned and, and when looking at the Ethereum ecosystem, nobody's owning consumer and no, no one's solving the consumer problems. So I think for the last two and a half years, we've been kind of trailblazing what I like to call consumer crypto, really trying to meet consumers where they are and break boundaries and push barriers in, to, in terms of, you know, what that adoption looks like in the space. And this is just another piece to our ecosystem in which we can kind of power our Web2 products. So you got to understand, you know, Pudgy Penguins is more than just an NFT on the blockchain. We have, you know, toys that we're selling at Walmart and Target. We have, you know, built Millions of views that we get every single month on social, you know, we are doing things and trying to push products that are going to appeal to mass and ultimately I need the underlying infrastructure to do that. And so rather than going to somebody else who I felt at the time that I, I still don't know anybody that I think is fulfilling the needs that I need fulfilled as a consumer crypto builder, we decided that uh, we needed to take the leap ourselves and build it ourselves. So I don't think uh, they, they have nothing to do with one another outside of, you know, I think the benefits that the holders will get, you know, from that ecosystem succeeding. Uh, to me, it's just another layer to ultimately the igloo, which is uh, the company that we're building.
Cool. I'll, I'll ask you the spicy question. So what would you say to people who are saying, oh, pudgy penguins, NFTs are going down. There's, this is just like them finding like something, something new to do that can extract more value. I, we haven't extracted any value up until this point. I mean, we, we bought the business for $2.5 million. We put $500,000 in the bank, and we bootstrapped this thing uh, with a nine, outside of a $9 million raise. But we haven't taken any money. So this idea that we're extracting value, I think, is uh, you must not know our business if you're saying that. So I think from our perspective, uh, you know, we're in the business of creating value. I think uh, the last two and a half years has been uh, exactly that. I don't think anyone can say that so we've done otherwise. So uh, we're in the business of creating value uh, for, for the entire space and for the entire industry, but more specifically our holders. I mean, my loyalty starts and stops with them. And uh, when, you, when you kind of understand the flywheel that this could kind of create, an ecosystem like this could kind of create, you know, a big thing for Pudgy Penguins was in the last, you know, nine months, we got, you know, $25,000 in airdrops and third party airdrops coming into the holders. And that was because of the community and, and the brand that we cultivated. You know, if we own that ecosystem and people are incubating projects there, maybe there's a flywheel that we can create. So I, I, I think it's more, you know, in line with the plan that we've been kind of executing on for the last uh, two and a half years, which is, you know, one, pushing crypto forward to mass and, uh, you, know, you know, benefiting our holders and rewarding them in every way that we can. It seems like both of you guys are playing this playbook where you guys started from NFT collections and now you're both building um, different types of tools, businesses. You've built a lot of things, too. Um, is that just what it's going to have to be for NFT projects, that they all have to become like utility projects? Do we think that NFT projects can actually just exist purely as social clubs, or is that bound to go to zero? I, I think they can totally exist just as social clubs, but I think that also you know, comes down to the ambition of the founders. I mean, there's, you know, social clubs naturally you know, have a ceiling as to where they scale. Uh, I'm in the business of trying to win. I'm trying, I, I want to be you know, one of the most important people in crypto, and whether that happens or not is up to how well we execute, but that's just not going to happen doing one thing. I think it's, it's about building an empire and an ecosystem, right? We talk about ecosystems uh, uh, all the time, and, and with NFTs specifically, there's an elephant in the room. You issue more NFTs, it's the beginning of the end, right? So this idea that you constantly mint new collections to grow the pie, ultimately you fragment liquidity. NFTs naturally don't have that much liquidity, so fragmenting liquidity leads to a mean, is kind of a means to an end. So if issuing new NFTs is not in my roadmap and not in my playbook, because we've seen that a thousand times, and we know that every time you know, a project finds success and mints new NFTs and goes down that rabbit hole, it leads to a disaster, right? How am I going to grow my ecosystem? How am I going to grow my army? You know, Pudgy Penguins has 8,888 big pudgies, 2, 000, or 22,222 little pudgies, uh, and some uh, pretty notorious fishing rods, but that's about 40,000 assets in our ecosystem. I want to build an army that has millions of people, right? So at some point, I think the, the how NFTs succeed uh, versus, uh, you know, and, and the actual fundamentals and economics behind the success of NFTs is I think you have to keep the, the NFT ecosystem as kind of this first edition, as this premier, you know, access and the status symbol within this giant ecosystem. But what is a status symbol where only 100,000 or 200,000 people know what that status yields? I want to build an ecosystem where millions of people are a part of my ecosystem, but the, the creme de la creme, the early believers, the, the people who were there in the beginning are wearing these first editions, uh, that are this premium uh, you know, to this ecosystem and kind of identify you as such. So that's kind of how I look at it. You have to grow the pie, uh, but growing the pie by issuing new NFTs, uh, we've seen it a trillion times, it doesn't work. Uh, so at, at some point, I think if you have big ambitions uh, and you're building an NFT project, I think it's the best way to cultivate a core unit uh, and then ultimately you expand, and as long as those things that you use to, to expand the ecosystem benefit that core unit, they will continue to rally behind you and, uh, and the continue to galvanize the mission. Got it. So what would you guys say to anyone who wants to create an NFT collection, like a founder who wants to create an NFT collection? Like, why, why do they need to actually create an NFT collection? I, I, my opinion is that I think there's no better place and no better way to create community. I mean, ultimately it starts... But communities can exist from meme coins, they can exist from yeah, all but sorts it, of things. But, but, but I, I, it's the identification layer, right? That, that there's meme coins, there isn't this like centralized, pro, or there isn't this profile picture in which you can easily identify on the internet, uh, you know, somebody that you know shares those values. And it's almost like... A, a, like a, like a chain reaction effect that I think only NFTs can kind of create. And there's also some sort of symbolism that I think they create that I think meme coins just naturally can't replicate. There's, some, some, there's something unique about me having, you know, Penguin 6445 and, you know, Frank having D God, you know, 114. Uh, you know, there, there, there's something symbolic about that. There's something cool about that. There's something that's like clicky about that. Not everybody can be a part of that. So I think there's, there's tiers to 
to community, right? I think naturally there, there's always been hierarchy in the world. That's why I think like social, you know, sorry for all the socialists in the crowd, but that's why I think like socialism doesn't work because like this idea of like everyone is at the same spot doesn't really necessarily work. It, it never really has. So uh, I, I think naturally NFTs are the best way to create community. Uh, and uh, that's, why I would, uh, that's why I would start there. You know, to, to, I, would, I want to tell you, I want to say like the, the poetic thing to say would be like, yeah, go start one. But I think our industry like doesn't, doesn't enjoy uh, rewarding people that go against the grain. So to your question, like if I'm being realistic, should you start an NFT project right now? Probably not, right? Like, you get roasted for doing something new in this space, which I think is a bigger problem. But uh, it's, it's one of those things where if you're gonna do it, have like a fresh take. Fingers crossed, like, you know, you catch a bit or whatever, or you're probably gonna get shit on, I'm not gonna lie. That's my, like, yeah. <laughs> it's just, that's the real take, honestly. Well, the issue probably is, don't do it. Like, so there, the infrastructure <laughs> surrounding NFTs has only enabled, like, the use case of PFPs to uh, succeed. And PFPs are inherently like these assets that are built on this concept of scarcity. So how do you actually get into a state of like many, many, many NFTs or millions of NFTs when like the whole point of NFTs is that there aren't a lot of them? Like how can you actually set that market up for success? Um, yeah. I think you have to look at it as like additions, right? Again. But that's dilution, right? Like you have more and more NFT collections. You're no, not necessarily. More I more mean, that, that's like that's like saying a regular Pokemon pack. You know, every time it sells, dilutes the first edition Charizard. I would argue it actually helps the first edition Charizard. It's this idea that everyone like flooded us when we went to Walmart. Aren't you diluting the brand by going into Walmart? No, I'm getting more people to have affinity and love for the brand. I'm getting more people in. That's creating a premium on the things on, on the one that it creates the most value and has the most value. This idea that these smaller denominations of these things that you use to grow the ecosystem dilutes the ecosystem is such a farce. It's like the worst thing that anyone's ever said. And it's like I, I've battled this for like the last two years. It actually is the complete opposite. And look no further than just traditional brands and traditional collectibles uh, and how that value is accrued. So I, I take the complete opposite stance. I think it, you know, it, it comes down to status and, and, and what this thing represents. Ultimately, if you want your NFT one day to be worth a million dollars, it's because there's endless demand through millions or tens of millions of people who put that value on that product, and that only goes by that only happens through distribution and awareness. So basically, you're saying, but that hasn't happened, right? Like there has been no NFT collection that has introduced multiple collections, and then those like subsequent collections become more valuable. It's but all, I'm, but I'm not saying I'm not saying one, collections. Right? I'm, you, you know, you can do it like through tokens. I think that's where you kind of pointed out to him. I, I, I don't think it's necessary. I, again, collections I think is the elephant in the room where you can't do it, but again, DGOD token is a perfect example of that. That's the exact way on how you grow the ecosystem so that you make a premium on the NFT. That's like the perfect way to do it. Uh, I think NFTs, again, because you're kind of confusing people around, you're, you're, not, you're not making a clear delineation between the different collections, and I think ultimately that's the problem. Uh, but I think from, the, from a token perspective or from a product or an awareness perspective, right, you know, Pudgy Penguin Toys being an example, I think those things are all net positive towards awareness, right? If he has a million holders who hold D-God token and there's only 20,000, you know, D-God NFTs, ultimately those million people are putting a premium on those 20,000 NFTs because they know the value of that. They want that identity. They want to be, you know, the... I, the word I want to say is not okay. appropriate, but like the, the top dog in the room, and then they, they, they want those, you know, 20,000 NFTs. So, you know, if and when, because I believe in Frank and everything that he does, when he gets a million holders and D-Gods, those NFTs will be worth exponentially more than what they're worth today, not because they're tied through some bonding curve and whatever clever things he's figured out, but because of the, and that probably will help, obviously, but I think because of the premium that everyone will, that's a million people who recognize and love and know the brand that then want to have that elite status symbol within the community. Has the D-God token made more people buy D-God NFTs? I mean, yeah, technically. But I think it's, it's hard. I, I, honestly, I don't know. I'm still <laughs> doing the data. We got to, like, yeah. Let it settle. Let it settle. All right. We have less than a minute left. Maybe <laughs> predictions for the future of NFTs. What are NFTs going to look like in a year? I, I, I can go. Yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, there's this notion that NFTs have, have been dead, and obviously I think the, the technical metrics are indicative of that, but I think if you look at the top NFT collections, they've never been executing harder. I mean, the execution across the board is incredibly impressive, and I think what NFTs are doing for the entire crypto space is not to be underestimated. And uh, if you're just a trader and somebody who just looks at the opportunity, it's been two and a half years since uh, NFTs took the downturn. I mean, the, basically the day we bought Pudgy was the day NFTs started going down. 
Uh, and uh, crypto is secular, so uh, these things come back around every three or four years, and we saw that big run up when all the coins and everything was running up with it. I think that's when Pudgy Penguins kind of, uh, you know, had its big moment, and uh, I think it's one of those things that, uh, you know, when the NFT cycle comes back, when you look at the infrastructure that's in place, uh, they'll be back bigger and better than ever, and I think you'll see multiple NFT projects go where uh, no other NFT has gone before. Oh, right. I have an answer. Future yeah. NFTs on Solana. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I think we're out of time. Take care.